We've been waiting for you. Oh, you guys, it's Randy Jones. Hey, everybody. Hello, I'm Lisa. I'm Mom. Lisa. Hello, guys. How are you, Lisa? I'm great. I've I've been looking. Y'all can hear me. I don't need that, do we? Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Of course. How's everybody doing? We're doing good. How are you? <laughs> oh, you said you wanted to see us in the front row. Here we are. Well, but this, I said the front row for the burlesque show. <laughs> oh, there too. You're early. Wait, are you in the burlesque show? No, but the burlesque show tonight, like 11 o'clock, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? Oh, you don't know about yeah, that? Yeah. Paula, you and Ken should know about that. Barry, are you bringing them? I heard it's great. I heard it's Laura awesome. and Anita. Yeah. Am I right? Right. Yeah. Um, Yes, there is. I heard it's going to be yeah, done too. Yeah, yeah. But right now, thongs and what g-strings. Are we, thongs and g-strings tonight. <laughs> and pasties. And That's a big I, part of the I don't lesson. think they have, do they wear pasties? I yeah, think so. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. a deal breaker. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, but that's burlesque. They make it glittery and they put tassels <laughs> and twirl. And make them go in opposite directions. Because that's a real talent, I yeah, guess. Yeah, right. <laughs> it is. I couldn't do it. I guess I haven't tried yet. Maybe I could. Yeah. Floridian Ballroom A tonight, 11 o'clock, right? 11.30. 11.30. <laughs> Gosh, there's a lot of acts. They're going to be up there at 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Especially if you have to stuff dollar bills in those G-strings. Those whatever. <laughs> whatever How's everybody doing here today? Yes. Have you guys been enjoying yourself? Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. because this is an environment... Um, not unlike Disney World for older people, I mean adults, I mean, lots of kids here, but for adults, I, I just think it's the most tremendous opportunity for those of us that have any kind of notoriety or career to meet face to face for a few minutes, um, a few moments sometimes, to, for people that have followed us, that are interested in what we've done, and it's just, it's the most tremendous opportunity for a person who, I'm an artist, I'm a recording artist and an actor, to have, a, to see you face to face and talk. I mean, right? I mean, right. Right. I remember names if you come and we've talked. Maribel, yes. Ilana, <laughs> and I, no, you weren't there yesterday. That is impressive. But I got y'all right. Yes. Uh, wait a minute, not Rincon, but you were not from Bayamon, you were from... My place <laughs> in Puerto Rico. But, do, but do so you know that guy leaving right now? Do you know him? The, uh, he's speaking <laughs> out. I'm already scared of one of But the opportunity to see and talk with folks that I might never have the opportunity with is one of it's, it's a priceless. It's like that MasterCard commercial. Yeah. It's precious. Yeah. And I've had a 40 year career since this is the 40th anniversary of Village People. Wow. And wow. so. And, I've, and this is I'm working. This is my 50th year as an entertainer. I started when I was 15 years old. I'll be 65 September 13th. Wow! wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm still ambulatory. <laughs> <laughs> but, but just to have the opportunity to see and talk with people is is remarkable. But what? But beyond that, that's from my point of view. But beyond that, I think what Mike Broder and the, his wonderful staff here for Supercon, what they create is an environment where people who on the on another part of, of the world may feel like oh you know what I do is special and what I do and other people might not understand when we come here when we come here like John yeah that's all right I understand everybody's got a pee brother <laughs> but but what when we come here it's a safe environment yeah. and it's 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 a place where everybody can be what they want to be and, yeah. and like their characters mm -hmm. and dress right. up like it and have fun. And we get to meet you. And we get, well, uh, yes. But so Village People was kind of an interesting experience. Now, when you're by yourself, do we just refer to you as a village person? You can. You can refer to me as Randy if you want to. You know. Um, um, I, I certainly have a, 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 a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. yes. I mean, you, you've been a huge icon for years and years and yes. years. People dress up that? like you. Wait a oh, second. Yeah. People Halloween. dress up people like you for Halloween every year. Right? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know. Every party we play wide. Exactly. Exactly. 
Yeah. Birthday parties, weddings, weddings <laughs> bar mitzvahs, cruises. You know, I think the only market we haven't hit really big is funerals. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all about what you need most. That's right. That's right. A cruise ship. So I, 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 every afternoon at Disney World and all of the the parks and the pools there. The um, the adults, uh, uh, people who have, do other things for the kids by the pool, they always play YMCA. Uh, there are 14 major league baseball franchises that use YMCA. There are several uh, National Hockey League uh, franchises that use YMCA. Wow. Um, wow. There are 10. They uh, have to buy that. I mean, oh, they, yeah, yeah, they send a check every three months. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's one of the many reasons that I smile most of the time and have, and have fun. Um, that, that's one of the reasons, but the, what really is the most impactful reason for me for being feeling good about my life and my career is that I get to see um, each and every one of you. And it's really, anybody who's been up to my table so far and met and talked with me, I think, I hope you get the feeling and the vibe that I have a good time and I appreciate every single moment of your attention that you've ever given me and I return it. You're so sweet. I hope really. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 But that's how I seem to feel. Yeah. I mean and um, you can tell. YMCA in the Navy, Macho Man, Go yes. West, all the songs, <laughs> and even my new stuff, I have actually I have a brand new single as the first original member of Village People. I'm the first solo artist to begin to chart on Billboard's Dance Club charts. And it wow. starts next Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, number three breakout is called Hard Time. You can go to iTunes or any place like that and download it. I'd appreciate it. If you want to download it, please do. If you can't, for some reason, I spread the word to you, friends, um, because mm -hmm. I want to get it as high on the charts as possible. Mm -hmm. But um, I've, I've been very blessed to get to know people and see people and have fun with you guys because I would not have the blessed life, I would not have the luxury of this life, I wouldn't have the opportunity to speak with you guys and see you like we've done all weekend if I hadn't enjoyed the support of y'all, your mothers and fathers and the people <laughs> that came before you all through and so I'm, I'm ultimately appreciative of it. So God bless you all, honestly. Pretty cool. So we're uh, there's a bird was did I see there's a bird was <laughs> Well well guess what? This is a QA, so we Ooh. we encourage the audience to oh, have yeah. questions. And uh, I think we have a couple already. And you She's a good moderator because she knows <laughs> I won't shut up unless somebody <laughs> Feel free to sit or oh, stand, no. whatever you are comfortable doing. If I, no one over 25 should be photographed sitting. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Anyone over 25? Because <laughs> if you're, if you're I, and I've got the photos to prove how great abs you can have at 25 years old, but when you get to be 65, the only way you got those abs is in a photograph. <laughs> so I'm going to stand because, first of all, out of respect for everybody that's here. So I, I adore you all. Let's ask some questions. Okay, questions. Here we go. Are you still in contact with the rest of the village people? Yes. Uh, except the only way I speak to one of them, and it's not because I don't like them, is because I have to use a medium because they're in a cemetery. One guy is dead. Uh, the guy who was the biker, Glenn Hughes, yep. he passed away in oh, 2001. I remember yeah. that now. Yeah. He passed away in 2001, uh, just before the towers fell. Mm -hmm. He was not involved with that, but um, he's passed away. Uh, we have a franchise. We have a business as um, with those two words, village people, and we have a group that performs right now as village people that license the name, and it has two of the original members the Native American and the guy that plays the sailor soldier sailor. role, yeah. okay. Alex Briley mm -hmm. and Felipe Rose. They have been there, Felipe has been there since the very beginning, so is Alex. And they still perform as the group. And they do a great show with four other additional members and they do represent the brand. They do an incredible show. And um, I would encourage you, if you have the opportunity to see them, awesome. like October 25th <laughs> at the Hard Rock in the Seminole oh, casinos cool. and stuff. Yeah. Oh, uh, really? They're performing there. So go see them. They do a really good show. I do solo stuff for the past 25 years. I've done solo concerts. Um, I will be next Saturday night 
um, in Gainesville at the North Central Florida YMCA for its 50th anniversary um, celebration. And then I will be, uh, August 19th, I will be back in Miami performing at the club at Renaissance. Um, and then for vacation, I'm going to be at Disney World for yeah. November 25th. <laughs> yeah, so, but, but, but we do have a franchise. And then I keep in touch with everybody. They're really great. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. Um, I see Rain, you're married. For 34 years okay, to the same that's man. that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. To we the same married. guy, 34 years. And I read about it on Wikipedia. You do? <laughs> Did you see it on TMZ? No. Oh, yeah, if you go to YouTube, you can see TMZ. There's a great thing. We did a, a wonderful three-day event in New York where uh, a Thursday night was, uh, if you've ever been to New York, there's a bus ride where it's one of those buses that is like stadium seating uh -huh. where half the bus is, is glass oh, and you can look right, out right. and it goes all around New York and it stops at certain points and people on the streets who are actors do um, uh, kind of, they, they play like singing in the rain. Uh, like a song on the bus, oh, cool. and the people on the street reenact that scene, oh, and oh, all around cool. New York. Well, that's where the first night, Thursday night, we, that's where I was. We were, did our proposal, oh, and then on Friday we got married at New York City Hall with our moms and our family cool. there, and then on Saturday we did a big feast. Um, and a, like a wedding dinner at the Feast of San Gennaro, which is the oldest Italian yes. feast in New York City. Wow. So we did this three-day event, and Harvey and uh, the, the folks, the staff at TMZ did this wonderful piece on us. So you can oh, go I'm look at that. that oh, yeah. I'm <laughs> and the great thing about it is, is I, as you guys can probably tell, I am I'm very serious about how I appreciate my life and how I appreciate my career. But I don't take myself seriously. Yeah. I am the first person to laugh at me and what I've done. I understand that I was this young, cute, attractive kid in 1977, wearing tight jeans and looking really, really. I was kind of, you were kind sexy. of nice. Yeah, yeah. You were kind of sexy. You were nice right? yeah. But I know. But we were, we were, we were. We were enthusiastic and we were young and we were talented and we had some really terrific pop songs like YMCA Macho Man, In the Navy, Go West, Can't Stop the Music. But I never took myself seriously because I understood what we were doing. And trust me, it takes a very intense gay face to sing <laughs> a songs like Macho Man, YMCA, and In the Navy with a straight face. You know what I'm saying? And I, seriously, so I've, I've always, and the reason I even, and to bring this around to what we said about uh, burlesque when I first brought, what came in, is that was one of the things I took inspiration yes. from. Yes. We all took inspiration, first of all, there's, there's six characters. Um, a cowboy, an Indian, a biker, motorcycle guy, a uh, construction worker, a sailor soldier, um, a construction worker, and a cop. Those were all six very stereotypical <coughs> male images that everybody was familiar with. We were not only familiar with it in America, but we were familiar with the people around the world were familiar with those American images because what I understood after I got my BFA from University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill and my master's from the University of North Carolina School of the Arts, I under, as an entertainer, to, in, in, as an actor and a dancer, I understood that the image of the cowboy mm -hmm. was just about the most American image mm -hmm. that anybody could portray. Right. It was the most, the strongest, the safest, the most reliable, the most independent image of any character that's ever been created by the Hollywood film industry, mm -hmm. which is what all of those images had been created by. And for the 75 years before I became part, we village people got together, the Hollywood film industry had sold those images of the biker and the Indian and all that and yeah. the cowboy all around the world. So everybody was familiar with it. Everybody was safe with cowboys. Yeah. John Wayne. John Wayne, Gary Cooper, Roy Rogers, The Lone Ranger, Clint Eastwood, Rawhide, uh, Matt Dillon, Gunsmoke, everything. So people were familiar with that. So I stepped into some shoes 
that had been worn by a, some boots that had been worn by a lot of people before me. Mm -hmm. And I understood what I was doing as an actor, because I'm an actor. This is a role. That, that is a role. Um, and I understood what we were doing. But we not only we, we started with those images and the songs, which were deceptively simple pop songs. Yes. Mm -hmm. YMCA, as silly as it sounds, Macho Man, as silly as it sounds, in the Navy, as silly as it might sound, they're deceptively crafted, well crafted pop songs. If you think it's easy to write a hit pop song, please write one. <laughs> write one. Write one for me so I can sell another 135 million records. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. So I understood what my initial um, equipment was, which was this cowboy image. But going back to the burlesque thing, when I was a kid, we combined, we combined these images with comedy, like mm -hmm. the Marx Brothers, yeah. the Ritz Brothers, the Three Stooges. Mm -hmm. We were kind of silly and we were funny. And you can get away with a lot of funny when you're cute and young. <laughs> and that's what we did. But I remember when I was 12 years old, we used to go to a county fair. How many, anybody have ever, ever been to a county fair? Yeah. And I, really now, well, I'm not talking about Dade County Fair because that's, that's a pretty expansive fair. Yeah. But when I used to go to a county fair when I was a kid, it was not with, you know, paved uh, walkways. It was like sawdust and gravel. Yeah. And there might have been the main drag where they sold the popcorn and the corn dogs and, and had a couple rides and stuff. And then, you know, there might be a little roads or pathways that go off to it little tent back there that had strippers in it. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're 12 years old, or 14 years old, and you're, you're, with, and you're sneaking in with a couple of guys, your friends, or where you pay your quarter, and the barker who's taking your money gives you a wink and, you know, lets you go in. And you, you go in there, and you've never seen a stripper before. And these... Now these are strippers, right? But they're not your A-level strippers. They're not your B or even you. Maybe they're not even your C-level. I didn't even know there was county fair level. No, this is county fair level. These are like gals that might be. Well, they got a tooth or three missing, yeah. and they might be forty. You know, at that time they looked like they were grandmas to me. But. She talked about pasties and tassels. They had skills, you know, they could make it go one way or the other way. But I remember this one woman, and she gave me a cue for what I wanted to do with as a village person. She gave me an insight. I remember seeing her, and it was like, at first, I, I'd never seen a pair of breasts in my life other than my mom. Right? Um, so she was doing her thing, and she had her grass skirt on, and she was making the thing swirl. And she was missing a tooth or two, but she looked at me and she gave me a look like a wink, you know, and a little wiggle. It's like, son, I know this is the first time you've ever seen a pair of hair yeah. but please don't be afraid. I'm not going to hurt you. You're going to get out of here a lot. So I took that as an inspiration as an actor for what I was doing so that when I went out there and was singing YMCA or Macho Man and, you know, posturing, and went right up to an audience. I wanted the audience to know that I was in on the joke. They were in on the joke with me. I was laughing at myself first mm -hmm. so that they could feel safe and at ease to laugh along with us. Right. And I remember I always wanted to walk off that stage and leave them with a wink, a wiggle, and a wave. <laughs> so that everybody felt like they were in on the party. Yeah. The three W's. And when you, when you, when you involve people, uh, in what you're doing and make them feel like they're part of it, mm -hmm. not removed, they, you can't, that's, that is priceless. It's a bond. That's, yeah. that's a bond. That's why anybody who was at the party last night where we sang a few songs and everything, it was more like a village meeting and I felt like a witch doctor in the middle of everybody <laughs> singing and everything. It was more like a village kind of tribal thing. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially what we try to create with village people with an audience and those 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 characters that we created nobody had ever done what we did before 
and nobody's ever done it since. Mm -hmm. And as silly as people might think the village people was, we had hits, we sold records, we made an impact with unpopular and social culture, and we made it so deep that it still exists today. Exactly. And to we need the, that, though. We well, need silly. Well, 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 yes, silly because I, I, it's not like, I, and I can talk about this in depth and under with with hindsight and describe it to you like I'm a professor up here talking about something, which <laughs> might be boring to some people. But what it is, we made an impact much deeper in pop and social culture that has affected people in ways they don't even know to this day. To the point where you can be at a Yankees home game or a Penguins home game in National Hockey League, and top of the seventh inning, you got a stadium full of 80,000 people, and YMCA comes on, That's right. and they're all in and the everybody's <laughs> up stretching Everybody and doing knows that. What to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, it's so oh, it's, I've been it's, games when they do it. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Exactly. Yeah. And it brings it, it brings people together. Yeah. It's not. It's not, a, it's not anything that divides people. It's not anything that requires you to be on one end of a political spectrum or the other. Yeah. It's not one thing that it requires you to have a certain amount of money or not. It brings people together. And what I have been my entire life as a performer and an entertainer is the epitome and the exact definition of what the French word divertissement means. For the moment that we're together, I distract you from thinking about your mortgage payment, your insurance payment, your gas bill, your any your car payment. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason I can figure out. After 50 years in a business, it's the only reason I can figure out why I exist, why I breathe, why I'm given the wonderful, blessed opportunity to speak to people, mm -hmm. to keep you from worrying about what it is you have in your life that you should worry about. And I mean, that's a blessing. Mm -hmm. Or as they say, it's a mitzvah. It's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate the attention that you guys give me. I appreciate the support you give me. And I appreciate the goodwill you give me. Because without you, I would not be here. And you can vote for me next week. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any questions from the crowd? Because this is yeah. your chance. Ken has one. Who's the most favorite person you've seen here? Or most excited to see? The most excited? Well, if I got a chance to walk around more. <laughs> but I can tell you what's really tremendous for me, personally, is I get to see people that I haven't seen since I hung out with them at the Playboy Mansion <laughs> in Los Angeles in 1980 or 1981. I had this, this discussion with Lee Majors. I was just going to say uh, Lee Majors, Lee. right? I knew yeah, it. Yeah. I, talked to, I talked to Lee last two weeks ago in Raleigh, right? And I said, oh, Lee, man, I haven't seen you in so long. I haven't seen you maybe since the late 70s, early 80s. He said, I said, remember some of those nights we used to hang out and party? We used to go to a house place in L.A., the mansion. He said, oh, yeah. He said, some of that was pretty rough. He said, I think I got a divorce out of there. <laughs> And I, um, uh, uh, love seeing Ken Page. I don't know if you guys know Ken Page, who does uh, from Oogie, Cats. Boogie, is that right? From Nightmare from Before Christmas. Cats, right? Yes, yeah, from Cats. Yes. Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, love seeing um, uh, Chris Sarandon. Oh, Hadn't yeah. seen him in a long time. He used to live in the village when he was still married to Susan. Mm, um, wow. yeah. yeah, lots of, uh, I'm just, you know, I'm trying. But that's, a, that's what is good for me. I mean, I, because I don't have that much time to go around to other people's tables and booths and stuff. But it's to, crowded. And, <laughs> it's hard and, to move to. And to be quite honest, I, there's so, I don't follow a lot of anime. I don't, follow, I don't play video games. Just like people probably may not listen to YMC and all that stuff. But I don't. I think I don't, everybody listens to my MC. I know that's one of whether they Whether they want to or not. Right? It's true, though. It transcends. It does. It does. But, but I don't get to see all of these things that, uh, that especially with like voice actors, like, yeah. um, uh, what's his name? Not Chris. Who's Garrison? Zach Garrison? Oh, yeah. From Steve Universe. 
who's he's hugely great. popular. He's, he's this great kid who's so popular that everybody knows him, and yeah. he's a great looking kid. His dad's great. Yeah. Um, but I, I just learned from two weeks ago and this this time that Zach Garrison is huge. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> the guy that does the Power Rangers with three names, John something. Jason. It's Jason. It's Jason. Yeah. He's huge. <laughs> and and Charlotte Chung. Yeah. Who's just a, an adorable sweetheart, but these are voice actors that um, have this tremendous success with um, their, their as, as voicing characters. Um, one of the great gals that I really is Anne Lockhart. Have you have you guys seen Anne Lockhart? She's Jude Lockhart's daughter. Is she really? Jude, who wow. was the mother in Lassie and on uh, oh, Lost, Lost in Lost Space. Space. Yes. Yeah. And, and she's also in Chicago Fire currently. You know that TV show Chicago Fire. She's a great gal, but I. I kept June looking, June, uh, no, oh, her Anne, daughter. Her daughter. Anne, Anne. Oh. Yeah, and I kept looking at Ann at lunch when we'd eat in the green room, and I was looking at her and thinking, "Why do you look so familiar? I mean, you got. Are you June's daughter? And she looks just like her. She's got the same big eyes and wow. beautiful personality. She's, yeah. So I mean, it's wonderful to be here. And see people that I might never seen, like Linda Blair. When I saw her, oh, she's when, lovely. When she oh, got off the plane and she had been delayed and stuff, I think, and she was feeling a little like rugged and rough, and you know, but she was taking pictures. It was her uh, photo op, and I came in right after her, and I knew I wanted to get a picture with because <laughs> I hadn't seen her since the early '80s, and. Um, and she said, oh, I don't know, how, how do I look? She said, I just got off the plane and stuff. I said, Linda, don't worry. These guys in this professional photo group thing, they make you look great. That light is yeah. fantastic. <laughs> and so I, the picture that I got with her, she looks great. Awesome. She looks amazing. And she's yeah. a wonderful gal. And if you go to her table, if you go to her table, she's got one half of the table is all horror and scary <laughs> stuff, and the other half is the dog and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but she has a does she have an animal foundation or something? Yeah. Oh, I haven't been over to her. So, yeah. Yeah. so she's you know she's like all of that. That's, that's a metaphor so cool. for all of us. Yes. Yeah. We have we all are good and evil, or we <laughs> good and bad, or or. What, however you want to look at it, but it's a great metaphor for hilarious. what we have in our lives. Right? We're Same thing for puppies and kittens. Yeah, <laughs> really, seriously. But, um, and I'm sure me up here running my mouth like this <laughs> was maybe not exactly what you expected <laughs> to get from that guy that wore the tight jeans and the boots <laughs> and the cowboy hat that sings YMCA and Macho Man, but I, I would like to answer if you have any questions. I'll answer anything yes, you want to ask me. Yes, we have about five more minutes, so now's your <laughs> chance. You're never really? going to have this chance again. Mm -hmm. yes. What's it like to be on Mike Douglas and make the round? And Merv Griffin, Griffin and, and do, do uh, uh, Bob Hope USO specials and wow. Dick Clark American Bandstand. Well, I can tell you, it, a lot of people say, well, how did you come up with those letters for YMCA? I mean, that pretty much even... Mm -hmm. Elementary school children know how to do. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't create that. We did not create that. The group did not create that. That came from when we debuted in 1978 YMCA on the Dick Clark American Bandstand Saturday morning television program. Oh, wow. And it came about in a way that when you shoot television shows, sometimes like they would shoot the shows for Saturday and they would shoot three shows at a time. And so the kids that were uh, the dancers and in the audience, would they have them bring three shirts or blouses or tops to change so that they would look like, different, 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 like a different show, right? Well, the, when we debuted YMCA, they, <laughs> this is funny, <laughs> trust me, they had bust in three busloads of kids from a cheerleading camp oh. right outside, not Compton, but some area right outside LA. So anybody that either has a kid who's a cheerleader, was a cheerleader, or knows how cheerleaders are, they are the most energetic <laughs> folks. I mean, young teenagers are energetic anyway, but cheerleaders, I don't know if it's sugar, caffeine, what it is, but they are lively. And so when we got out there, our choreography for doing YMCA was when we would get to the chorus and sing, 
you can get it at the YMCA. We would did this clap above our heads, right? Well, when those kids saw it, the cheerleaders who were energetic, knew how to take a cue, they saw us do, you can get it at the Y. <laughs> they saw the Y. And so the next thing they did was M C A. Wow. So if you go on YouTube, you can find the video where Dick Clark, after we perform YMCA, he comes back and says, this is the first time this has ever happened. We have to write, rerun that tape and show you what was happening in the audience. Mm -hmm. And they turn the cameras around and you see what's going on in the audience and the kids are doing the letters. That's so that awesome. Cool. We weren't doing the letters, we were just clapping our hands. But So that thing that everybody knows YMCA for was completely organic and from our wow. audience. No and idea. that just serves as a, as a signifier for what we did and how it affected people and why we, I have benefited from it for all these years. And it's just it's one incredible. more thing in my list mm -hmm. of why I'm appreciative to everyone wow. that's ever helped that me out this That is life. an amazing story. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Wow. And so do you do. And <laughs> <laughs> we can go home and look it up. How 21st century, right? <laughs> Serious. But I, mean, I, I really appreciate talking to you. This has been a delight. I am so happy that they put me on to moderate this so that I can... You only had to ask one question and I, mean, I read my that's all we need, all that right? time. I mean, <laughs> that's the best panel. <laughs> and we found out the origin story right. of the dance. Right. I've had a running joke. My whole family's had a running joke. Me too, and I'm my, it. <laughs> well, no, with my grandmother because she's the only person we've ever known who couldn't do the letters. So our running oh. joke, no, our oh, our running joke was always Is that she, she Asian. She, <laughs> no, that, that she, no, like, seriously, she was be spelling hard to out other four-letter words. Mandarin, I'll you know just what say I mean? that. <laughs> and oh yes, no, my grandma was just adorable, but in little and weak, and she tried her best. And we we're like, I think that's F you. Wait a second. Oh. <laughs> and that's like an ongoing joke. Well, uh, just <laughs> just one more quick moment. One of the early places we played um, um, it, when we were doing before we did stadiums and stuff. We did what, um, um, Godel, Godel, Godelan, Godelet University in Washington, D.C., which is the University for the Deaf. Oh. And it was, we, first of all, we thought, wait a minute, if I were, are we really booked at this university for deaf people, mm -hmm. which is the largest university for deaf in the country, in Washington, D.C.? And we were there, and these kids, Unfelt from the vibration of the music and knew what we were doing so well wow. that they were all, when they came to the chorus, they would all be going, YMCA. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's so oh, awesome. it's beautiful. I mean, to, to see how music, whether it's my music, whether it's anybody who chooses to create music and sing it and communicate it, how that translates across languages. Ethnicities, mm -hmm. national boundaries, religions, ethnicities, everything. And that is really the power of music. Mm -hmm. And anybody, I can't say anybody, but I think with me, it's one of the reasons <laughs> that I like and am so grateful for having the opportunity to be a performer and an entertainer. And YMCA and Macho Man and in the Navy give me an excuse to be in front of people. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> and I can tell when people's eyes start to glaze over, that's the time for me to sing a song. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what that, but, but it, it, having a, a career in music and doing songs and stuff is, I think it's, it's just a reason and it's a, a, a way that I can get in front of people and talk and communicate. Mm -hmm. Because we're all basically, we are all just human beings. We are walking the path that we have to walk, which is our own unique path. We are wearing our pair of shoes, boots, heels, whatever we wear. And we have to live this life in our skin the way we live it. And I think most of us ultimately want to just get through it without stepping on anybody else's toes, without getting our toes stepped on, and, and enjoy this life and protect the people we love and take care of. That's what we are here for. 
And I'm glad you, I'm really, really happy and I am so indebted to each and every one of you guys and every one of the other millions of people in this world that have ever shown me any kind of love, encouragement, or support. And it's just a remarkable thing and I will forever feel grateful for it. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Randy Jones, you guys. And we can see you at your booth also. Yeah, okay, yes. yeah, yeah. I don't okay. know what the number is, but come there. Oh, we'll find and you. And don't forget the burlesque show tonight. <laughs>